But as far as the federal government is concerned, the controversy surrounding the president's West African school living certificate has finally been out to rest with the presentation and of the attestation and confirmation certificate by the WIAC registrar last Friday. Presidential spokesman Femi Adishino, who gave the position, says those still raising any dust on the issue, especially members of the opposition, are doing so out of mischief. Ms. Mr. Adishino, who was a guest on our political program Sunday Politics, however, says the matter will not affect the chances of his principal in next year's polls. Absolutely superfluous. Nothing to eat. Storm in a teacup. And it, it, it is coming from a party that has run out of ideas. It, it has nothing to offer Nigerians. And if they don't hang whatever they are saying around the president, they have nothing to say. So whatever they have said is superfluity of nothingness. Storm in a teacup. For us in the presidency, it's neither here nor there that some people are criticizing. Because for us, it's, it's an issue that was dead. And even now, it's still as dead as a doornail. For those who believe, no evidence is needed. But those who don't believe, you can't convince them. Therefore, if in 2015, more about 50 million people believed in the president and voted for him despite the, the concocted crisis about a certificate or no certificate. How much more in 2019? A lot more, a lot more will still express confidence in it. Still on politics, the Buhari led federal government has been asked by the People's Democratic Party candidate, Atiko Bubaka, to be prudent and stop donating the nation's lean resources to others. The Atiku campaign organization, in a statement today, criticized the federal government's planned donation of a 500,000 US dollar to Guinea Bissau, along with other material donations. The former vice president's campaign office is asking why a nation that has been officially named as the world headquarters for extreme poverty will donate her resources to others instead of using them to solve pressing domestic problems. It went further to say, How prudent is it to go? about taking loans from whomsoever cares to lend you money and then turn around to give out those same monies even when their own people are suffering the worst forms of poverty they have ever endured. Elsewhere, Nigeria's war against corruption as fought by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is a trial by the media and attempted blackmail of political opponents. This according to the governor of River State, Mr. Nyesun he told Channel's television's Ladia Kiridoluale on our political program, Roadmap 2019, that he has and will continue to resist stoutly what he describes as the Commission's attempt to investigate his government or summon its officials. We must work together to stop impunity. What I don't like is this ES media trial. And I told them, you cannot blackmail me. You cannot blackmail this government. If a lot of public support of this paper, the River State government will do 20 trillion naira. So what? So what? Is it, a, is it a state money? For Christ's sake. Federal government never gave me a grant to say they have to spare the money. We are a federal system. We got the common pool at the end of the month. I will share the money. Federal government, you take this. State government, you take this. Why would federal government who's perversing my own money? Who's perversing federal government's own money? In any case, they're not working. They cannot be on their own. They, they, they cannot be. You see, that is the problem we're having. You just don't come and say, this man is corrupt. Then the whole world will say, yes, so they're doing their work. We are tired of that. For the full interview with Governor Wike, do watch Roadmap 2019 tomorrow, Monday the 5th, November 2018 at 9pm, only on Channel's television. Still on politics, the Chief of Staff to Governor Rocho Sokrocha of Imo State and a governorship aspirant under the platform of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Uche Mwosu, has criticised the party over what he describes as lack of internal democracy. Mr. Nwosu, who addressed a news conference in Abuja, insists he is the governorship candidate of the party in Imo State, having won the primaries conducted on the 3rd of October 2018. He claims that the national chairman of the party is being misled, insisting on the need for Adam Sashomale to retrace his steps if he wants the APC to retain the governorship seat in the state.
What I see now is a disappointment. There is no internal democracy. I have never seen where you conduct an election and somebody won, and from nowhere you bring another person as a candidate of the party. It's unacceptable. I envisaged this, and I went to the party national secretariat. I wrote the first letter, wrote the second letter, wrote the third letter, asking our chairman that something is about to happen, that he should come to my head. No reply was given by the national chairman. I went to court. I got court order, restraining the party from submitting any name that is not my name, restraining the party from accepting any name that is not my name. I got the second court order from Owere Federal High Court, restraining the party from submitting any name from the purported resort that Gulak was parading. But even with this, the national chairman told us that he will go ahead and submit the name of Hoku Zodema. It is unacceptable. Away from politics, in Kogi State, North Central Nigeria, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has distributed relief materials to the people affected by the flood disaster as part of efforts to ameliorate their suffering. The Director General of NEMA, Mustafa Mehaja, who was in Lokoja, the state capital, to supervise the distribution of relief materials, gives the assurance that the federal government is already in search of a permanent solution to ending issues of flood disasters in the country. September this year, floods ravaged several communities and destroyed properties worth millions of naira across the country. Those affected were forced to seek out other locations to rest and find some kind of relief. Kogi State was declared as the worst hit by the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency amongst the five states affected by the floods. The state government set up an internally displaced persons camp and the federal government sent relief materials to assist the victims. The Director General, Nama, who is in Lokoja to supervise the distribution of the items along with his team, first pay a courtesy visit to the Deputy Governor, Mr. Simon Achuba. This item will be distributed directly, where I have been, been distributed to the people directly through the combined effort of NEMA and SEMA and other stakeholders in the state. The deputy governor lauded the effort and commitment shown by the federal government to ensure that people affected by the flood are not left alone. As you are going to distribute, you will see for yourself that it is not those who are sitting down in the offices or who are living in highland areas that are coming to benefit, but indeed individuals who were affected by the flood. The NEMA team and their state counterparts head to the warehouse where the food items and other materials are kept before proceeding to the IDP camp to inspect the clinic and then distribute the food. The food has been distributed and in the manner we plan it. So, and that is the aim of the coming and that's what I saw. And I really commend the effort of all both uh, SEMA and, and NEMA personnel, the Red Cross and all other stakeholders that have been working. Although grateful, the victims at the camp ask for more assistance from the government. I've lost many things, so if government can help us more than this, we can, we will happy, we'll be happy. We need government to assist the help us and the food. Because of this food now, some people must don't go, uh, they go borrow. Inside this food now, they will carry go give them. No money, nothing, nothing. Residents of Kogi State were also affected by the flood disaster of 2012, described as maybe the worst flood disaster in the country. These internally displaced persons will definitely be looking to a restoration of their regular way of life. A family of five that has been living like destitutes with a questionable mental state is presently receiving medical care in Calabar, the Cross River State capital. The plight of the family first came to public attention when the man, known as Ben Auger, his wife and three children, were seen licking on Kempt and roaming the streets of his village in Bekwara, local government area. It emerged that Mr. Auger, whose two other children are in the care of relatives, has been battling a mental disorder known as schizophrenia.
This is Ukwa, a village in Bekwara local government area, about six hours away from the Cross River State capital, said to be home to this purportedly deranged couple and their children. Their story first came to public attention following a post by Progress Oberico, a youth corps member in Bekwara local government area that went viral on social media. The family has been homeless, wandering from place to place under the rain and scorching sun. Relatives claim Mr. Ogger's strange behavior became evident shortly after the graduate of University of Calabar returned from a sojourn in Cameroon and Nigeria's federal capital, Abuja. He was not staying here. He was staying far away there. He came to this village with the wife and the children. So we were surprised. When he came, he went to his father's compound. All the material that he came with, he burned them off. That those things are earthly things that he doesn't want them. Some members of the community allege that the family begs in order to sustain themselves but would not accept money because it's contrary to their spiritual belief. If you give them the money, they, do, they don't refuse to collect the money. They will show you the particular things, how they're supposed to eat. They will go show you and you buy that thing for them. They carry, they tell you, say thank you. For Progress Oberico, the ex core member who first brought the family's plight to light, special attention should be paid to the children. The government should be able to give attention to the, fam to the mom and the children, to give them a house, but then not totally away from where people, probably are in an orphanage, so that they could be around people, they could be able to be integrated back into the society. The children should, you know, be taught what school means. Indeed, the Federal Ministry of Health has intervened, moving the family to a psychiatric home in Calabar, all expenses borne exclusively by the federal government. The medical director in charge of the facility explains Mr. Ogger's condition, which he says makes him interpret reality abnormally. You know, but what this man has, from what we can say, uh, is paranoid schizophrenia. Um, the wife is not ill, it's not actively ill. The kids are not ill. But the man has been able to transfer his, uh, those kind of delusional uh, disturbances that you have with the schizophrenic patient to the wife. So the wife, over the years, equally became deluded. Mr. Ben Orga is said to have had two children prior to the manifestation of his mental disorder who are living with other family members. The good news is that his wife and the children with them are fine.